Hello, Crisis Actors. It's Mary. I'm here with Brett. Today, we are talking about yet another pop culture conspiracy. This time, we are discussing the possible hidden meanings behind Billie Eilish's song lyrics and her public persona and what she may have done to get success in the entertainment industry. Specifically, we're talking about one of her songs called Bury a Friend. The meaning seems to be right in the title. This came out years back when she was 17. She is 22 now. But I believe that if this is a song about making sacrifices to the Hollywood elite to get success in the industry, then we've seen the results play out in the last few years. Yes. Well, like in, in a lot of ways, it, it's really funny because we were talking yesterday about Cat Williams using the term industry plant. And I don't know if and industry, Illuminati. Yeah, and, <laughs> and Illuminati. So I don't know if industry plant is necessarily the right word. But yeah. yeah. Well, people get freaked out when you talk about the Illuminati running Hollywood, but I see it as just a colloquialism for the Hollywood elite. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're Freemasons. Yeah. Well, we're just like, talking about the in group. Like, it's funny because I was, I was reading this article uh, from Seventeen magazine of all things. It was like an old mm -hmm. article on, on those conspiracy theories. And they actually just list, they, they list the Illuminati as a, a fake group, which is not true. It's, it's not a fake group. I'm not necessarily it's, saying that Billie Eilish is part of it. And like always, just so you guys know uh, in the comments, we're not saying that we necessarily subscribe to all of the ideas that we're presenting in this video. We're just entertaining the question because... Why not? It's yeah. That that's the annoying thing, right? Is a lot of people believe that like just because you entertain the, yeah. the idea of having an interesting discussion about something that could or could not be true, that may or may not be true, means that you wholeheartedly believe that it's that it's fact and that's yeah. not true. I find these things all, oftentimes more interesting than the concrete facts around the industry because it's just it's more interesting to entertain those ideas. Yeah, in this article it says uh, uh, apparently several fans think Billy is part of the Illuminati, a fictitious group, and then in parentheses. There is still no concrete proof that they actually exist. That's not true at all. When we when we make <laughs> YouTube videos that include that word, we get like a, a footnote on all those videos yeah. that describe what the Illuminati is. Right, exactly. Who would do that but the Illuminati? Am I, am I right or am I right? Yeah, the way that the media just has this resounding unilateral response to conspiracy theories only inflames them more. So we're gonna pay attention to them. This one is from The Vigilant Citizen. It's a website that I actually have been reading since I was 12 years old. Not kidding. Um, this is an article from five years ago when the song came out called The Disturbing Meaning of Billie Eilish's Bury a Friend. Billie Eilish has been identified by mainstream media as the future of pop. Her video, Bury a Friend, is a disturbing mix of mind control, trauma, and demonic possession. Here's a look at the dark world of Billie Eilish. And they analyze the lyrics and the imagery that's in her music video. You can click off and look at it if you want to for yourself but we can't play it on YouTube because of copyright mm. violations. Um, but basically it shows her as the monster under someone's bed. And the theory in this blog post is that this man in the bed that says Billy's name, it might represent her former friend XXX Tentacion. He is a rapper who died years back uh i believe that was this it was it the same year that this song came song out was 2019 he was shot in 2018 yeah he was shot yeah. in a, a an incident of gang violence mm -hmm. but the theory is that she may have uh made some kind of dark trade-off with the hollywood elite to bury a friend if those if that was true that those... she did some kind of human yeah. sacrifice of her friend x in order to get fame and success. If that was true, those the three men were were actually tried and convicted this past year. Um, and they were in 2023, sure. yeah. 2022 or 2023. And then one of them basically pled down to a lesser sentence in order to cooperate with the police. So uh, if he had had Billy's name, I'm sure he would have given it, correct? Well, she's she's <laughs> not the one who pulled the trigger, yeah. obviously. I'm saying like if she had, uh, if she had yeah. what ordered this to happen, 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, it, it is interesting. One of the one of the points that they make in these other articles is to say, um, like, if they were if she was doing this, because they actually in this other article they acknowledge the symbolism behind all that you see in this video. You know, whether it's the idea of mind control, the idea of uh, of escaping an evil, and, and they say like if she was if she was actually in the Illuminati, would she do it so blatantly? But a lot of people actually believe that that's the point, right? That they mm-hmm. flaunt it in your face. It's an inside joke for them yeah. to that's show this imagery so blatantly. That's why there's so much of the imagery in so much of Hollywood's, whether it's the music sets or in the films and stuff like that. It's very blatant. Mm-hmm. And uh, they point out the irony that Billie Eilish is so profusely praised for her artistic originality when it seems like this is all being directed from the top and she doesn't have much originality in her music videos at all um, because we've seen this before. She has these empty, demonically possessed eyes. She looks totally out of it throughout the video. There are gloved hands that are disembodied from like disembodied arms, manhandling her throughout the video, dragging her around to different places. And these would be representative of MK Ultra handlers. And if you don't know what MK Ultra is, I guess look into it for yourself. But it's the supposedly discontinued CIA mind control project. And these are declassified documents from the mm-hmm. Freedom of Information Act. Um, supposedly discontinued, but there are many theorists on the internet who believe that that never was discontinued and that it's actually being practiced on Hollywood celebrities and musicians, including Billie Eilish. Um, That she's just one most recent example in a long line of celebrities that had to do uh, human sacrifices, go through trauma, that makes them dissociate into alternate personas and they're given trigger phrases that uh, dissociate them into a different persona so that they can undergo Traumati- traumatizing rituals, basically occult rituals, demonic possession, um, and you know whether you think that that happens to Billie Eilish in real life or not behind closed doors, that is clearly what is being p- depicted in her music videos, and what is she trying to communicate through that? So her explanation for the meaning of this song is that she is the monster under the bed, and this is supposed to have a theme of sleep paralysis. So when people are in a state of sleep paralysis, they often report that there feels to be an evil presence in the room, standing on top of them or under the bed, touching them. Um, And in this music video, she is that demon. So the man on the bed says her name and then the song starts. So the the lyrics that they point to um, do sound like they refer to like occult rituals basically it says step on the glass staple your tongue bury a friend try to wake up cannibal class killing the sun bury a friend i want to end me and she also refers to selling her soul toward the end of the song she says the debt i owe gotta sell my soul because i can't say no then my limbs all froze and my eyes won't close. I can't say no, I can't say no. And uh, I actually looked at the comment section of her music video where all of her fans are praising this song and they see the same thing that I do. They said, I like how I can't say no in the break has a different meaning when it's repeated only moments later. The first is figuratively I can't say no because I always choose to say yes. But then later on it implies Literally, I say no, or I can't say no because I have no choice. And that would imply that she is a mind control slave who no longer has free will, no longer has bodily autonomy. She is completely controlled by MKUltra handlers. The, um, the art of the videos, one of the things that I find most interesting about this, about these topics is that whether you believe there's dark art behind what's being made, the art is done very, very well. Mm-hmm. Meaning that when you watch the video, it's polished. It's in the it's in the context of horror. The director of the music video is a dude named Michael Chavez, who did. Um, he's got a history of doing horror films, so he did mm-hmm. not good ones. He did the Curse of La Llorona, which is really really bad. But 
besides that, he, I mean, he did like the conjuring, the devil made me do it. And he did the nun too. So there are people involved in these processes. It's always weird to me when we talk about these things and you talk about such dark subject matter, which could have, you know, if, if this was proven to be true, really, really dark implications for real world people. Mm -hmm. But then you think about the art that it takes to make stuff like that. And we hear that a lot when we, when we've seen these videos about exposing Hollywood of just how much actual talent there has to be behind all of the trauma um, to make this stuff come out the way that it does. Cause the music, especially bury a friend is a, is a very, very well done piece of art. It's just has very, very sinister implications. If we take these conspiracies to the extent that, you know, to their logical conclusion. Right. Yeah. It, it, if, also, if you guys haven't seen the video, there are other things that are depicted yeah. like, um, these disembodied hands inject her with many syringes in her back. They well, take they her, her clothes they, off. Yeah, they rip the back of her. Of They're her pulling her off. hair. Yeah. yeah. Um, and by the end, it's sort of showing a successful result yeah. of a ritual to sell her soul, to sacrifice, to, to human sacrifice one of her friends. And in exchange, she gets massive success. Yeah. That is not the explanation that Billie Eilish gave for this song. But I noticed that a lot of her fans, not just niche conspiracy theory blogs and, you know, old fuddy-duddy Christians on the internet who don't understand what's cool to young people, her own fans have seen the same thing and they're not even looking at it from a perspective of trying to condemn her. I went and looked at the Billie Eilish subreddit and someone posted at the time that Bury a Friend came out, doesn't anybody think of the Illuminati when listening to Bury a Friend, or is this just me? It's literally all I hear. Selling your soul. Can't say no. I want to end me. And knowing Billy is smart, soft-hearted, genuine artist as she is, I'm pretty sure this song is her stance on her rise to global fame or whatever process she may have needed to go through in the entertainment industry to get her current success. They said they, they wanted to disclaim this so much because they didn't want to get hate thrown at them from the rest of the diehard fan base. They said, I'm not a conspiracy, conspiracy theorist. I'm just super curious as to what people think because never have I come across lyrics like this that speak so outrightly about uh, what kind of reminds me of XXX Tentacion. And am I reaching or do you hear it too? Also, don't get me wrong, I adore her and I'm aware of her style of music, but she's so insanely talented, she probably wouldn't have needed to sell her soul to, do, to anything in order to become recognized. That's not true. I'm not, also not, not religious, yeah. nor do I believe reptilians are chilling on this planet. LMAO, don't at me. And I expected the replies to be like, you're insane, you're seeing things that aren't there. Billy is just, you know, using dark imagery because she is a disillusioned teenager. But a lot of the comments who are also fans of her, who support her, who listen to her music, agreed and they saw the same messaging. They saw the same meanings in her art. Also, all the talents in the world doesn't actually mean anything in Hollywood. Oh yeah, it's for that's, sure. that's a, that's a false statement. Like the the most talented artists in the world don't make it because it's about who mm -hmm. you're willing to sell your soul to, and obviously not in such literal terms. But it yeah. is very much about the who, and it's very little about the how. And it's also about like which talented people are willing to do sexual favors for two powerful people in the industry to get ahead. I mean, we were just talking about Christian Keys doing this Instagram live where he's saying that he had to take the scenic route of his career, taking roles here and there, not the ones that he wanted the most because powerful people demanded sexual favors from him and he was not willing to comply. Yeah. So it's not just occult ritualism. It's also uh, things that erupted into the Me Too movement that we're talking about here. Which could very easily fall under the same symbolism. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, if you take it to the extent of art, you know, you could make the same symbol, like the same type of stance, you could take the same type of stance on having to sell your body to those right. who can give you the fame and fortune that you want. Right. And I would just say it's so easy to write off these theories when you look at it from these niche blogs, like I saw one called everydaychristianparent.com and it's it's saying why I don't let my children listen to Billie Eilish's songs because they're demonic. And she says, of course, her fans would laugh and simply say, this isn't your generation, chill. Um, but like it or not, the message is right there in front of your face 
whether you think it has a meaning in the real world, that's open to conjecture, but you know, a lot of people are finding that this is having a negative influence on the teenagers who are consuming it. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of factors that contribute to, to just why the, the latest generation seems to be so disillusioned. And certainly that was always true of, we would always say that about every generation prior to us, right? There, it's a, it's a disillusioned generation of people. But I think right now, I think f the, the culture around phones and social media on top of antidepressants, the medicalization of childhood, there's a lot of things that contribute to why someone mm -hmm. would make music like this. But her life experience growing up as somebody who had people that were, who knew people that worked, because both her parents her were, parents are actors and yes, musicians. So, so the, her, her brother also was on TV roles, and he writes a lot of her songs for her. Her life experience is not that of the traditional teenager. Mm -hmm. It's just that the overarching themes can, you know, themes of alienation, themes of feeling alone in the world, all of this stuff can appeal to someone on a broad level. That's, I mean, a lot of the best art is something that people can look into and find their own worldview their own experience in there even if it isn't necessarily what the artist is speaking of specifically yeah that's why it's so easy to make a song like bury a friend that might be referring to a very specific experience that is not relatable to the mass consumers but it can be packaged in a way that's exactly. relatable and that's why it makes so much money exactly and, and I, I think that's actually what it's funny because that's one of the things i find to be the problem with most of the entertainment that we see not in music per se but in scripted television and movies it's that they package it very very specifically now and they tell you this is what you need to think and feel from this piece of art that i've made whereas music is still very much left open to interpretation in mm -hmm. a lot of ways like the movies and television just they get remember like the boys the people who made the boys got very mad when people who like donald trump liked their show because they're like this isn't for you mm -hmm. right music can still be interpretive it's just so interesting that we live in this culture that demands open-mindedness mm -hmm. from everyone and you know, we just live in this open culture where everyone can make art about whatever they want and use whatever imagery they want, but how dare you interpret it incorrectly? How dare you interpret Billie Eilish's music as demonic? You are crazy, you are off the wall, you're spreading conspiracy theories, you should be censored. Honestly, to the people who are being censored, that only further confirms what they're yeah. saying. What's weird about that, too, is like, well, like if you make it and it's not supposed to be interpreted, she I guess she gives a couple of interviews and says it's about sleep paralysis. OK, yeah. fine. But like they what they're not willing to admit is that they make music for passive consumption, meaning that you're just supposed to take the slop, put it on the radio, go to work take the slop on the way home, and that's all you're supposed to think about it. They put all of this time and thought into the artistic representation of their art, but you're not allowed to even conjecture about what it means. That's mm -hmm. crazy. Yeah, and the lyrics, they, they always start off with something that's relatable to the masses, especially the teenagers that are fans of Billie Eilish. Bury a friend communicates that life is hopeless and the only way out is to, quote, sell my soul. Teenagers will start off thinking life is hopeless. I totally relate to that. I'm depressed. I'm anxious. Um, all of my problems, I can't escape them. The selling point, though, selling your soul, like yeah. that is a new concept that you're introducing to them. And because they're consuming it so passively, they don't question it. Devil went down to Georgia just in, <laughs> in current year. Um, I, it's also it's just. I'm over the idea that you're not allowed to interpret art the way that you want. Like that's mm -hmm. the beauty of it. And the fact that the people that push back so heavily, like I said, every video we do where even the Illuminati's even, there's only a couple of things that do that for us. So it's the Illuminati, climate change, and th I think that's it. I think those are the only ones that trigger like like this is from YouTube specifically like we get a notice under all our videos that gives like the definition of these terms right. because because so we're afraid. such idiots we're so stupid that we need YouTube we need the Google corporation to give us the context because we're ignorant hillbillies yeah. um but which, I say like at least from a Christian perspective which is where this is being written from and also I'm receiving it as a Christian hearing it that way the, the scripture tells you to look at the fruits of something to to know its nature mm -hmm. and they point out that Billie Eilish's advocacy is where you see the results of okay. her values she has been vocally 
pro-abortion. I mean, she made this huge show of uh, being enraged by the overturning of Roe v. Wade. Um, They also point out that she pushes a lot of climate change activism and advocacy. She's getting, I think she was paid by like the Global Citizen NGO to get young people registered to vote because of the climate change issue, uh, which is again, pushing fear porn onto young people. Uh, also, but why would they be so depressed? <laughs> pushing Marxist racial justice ideology, especially during 2020 when it was trendy to do so. Uh, and also LGBTQ rights. She recently came out as queer. It's popular. It's cool to be queer. Um, But then also she said that the media outed her against her will. That's a whole other conversation. But yeah, you know it by its fruits. And uh, I would just say be skeptical. That's that's always what we say. Be skeptical of what you consume. Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.